The following footage was shot over two days. The first day trip was about 17 miles and the second day trip was right at about 20 miles. Um, we took it on some country roads, up hills, um, did some bump tests and even got out on the highway a little bit. So I'm going to give you a real review of my experience with this bike and this company. I'm not a professional reviewer. But first, why I chose Magicycle. As per the company specs, a 52 volt battery, fast charge battery, took about two and a half hours for me to charge fully. A 750 watt electric motor, seven levels of pedal assist, a very nice color LCD display, and they claim a maximum range of 55 miles. The company's flagship model is the Cruiser and it comes in step over or step through. One of the reasons I decided to go with the Magicycle was a lot of the companies today will design their bikes, but then they outsource them. But with this company, they're designing and building their bikes. Magicycle also got a lot of good reviews on their customer service and support after sales, and that means a lot. My bike shipped from their California warehouse, got here in a week. It was well packed. I'm not especially mechanically inclined, but it was basically put on the handlebars, seat the front wheel, get it locked down. Put on the fenders, get the pedal screwed in, tightened, and if you have your battery charged, you're pretty much ready to go. And there she is, initial impression, it feels solid, it feels beefy. The specs are all good, but there's really only one way to test it out. The first part of the vid, we're going to visit a local landmark. And uh, the second part of the vid, we're going to do the road test and see how the bike holds up. We're about to see if the Magicycle lives up to what the company promises. Here we go. Johnson's Purple Martin Colony is the world's largest sanctuary for what turns out to be North America's largest member of the swallow family. Uh, Purple Martins are native songbirds and east of the Rocky Mountains they nest almost exclusively in human supplied housing so they're dependent on us for their survival. The Purple Martin is one of America's most well-loved songbirds for a lot of reasons, I guess. The variety of their song, a lot of people talk about that. And the aerial acrobatics is easy to see. And their insect eating habits. They eat all kinds of insects, and uh, that includes the kinds that tend to damage crops. Uh, they catch their insect prey midair with their long pointed bills and they have really excellent eyesight. They can spot prey from up to 100 feet away. Johnson's Purple Martin Colony was started 25 years ago by Mr. Gerald Johnson on Sand Mountain in Northeast Alabama and they have over 2200 individual apartments for Purple Martin families. The birds winter in South America all the way to Peru and then they migrate to North America in the spring to breed. And did I mention that Mr. Johnson also dabbles in windmills?
here's the part where we get literally lost on the back roads and uh, put the magic cycle through some paces and see as far as durability and performance, if it holds up or not, does it deliver. But there is one last little thing before we hit those back roads, and that is talking about where electric energy is. Is it quite there yet? No, it's not. I'm still gonna need some of this to get this beautiful piece of machinery all the places I wanna take it and enjoy and drive. There's two things I've got to know about a bike, or it's a non-starter. Uh, the first one is stability. And the Fat Tire Cruiser tracks steady and true, whether pedaling or going uphill. So we're good to go in that department. The second one is how does it do on loose gravel? Lots of loose gravel. Some of these roads could be more accurately described as loose rock rather than loose gravel, but the fat tire did really well, so no complaints on traction on the road. Let's try some hills now. All right, this is a pretty big hill. Let's pedal on up it and see how we're doing. Okay, on pedal assist, four at about 75%. Man, that was easy. I could have throttled up it easy. We're still going up. But this is smooth. There we go. Yeah, I like this. Another hill. Let's see if we can straighten this one out too. I'm doing 15 miles an hour up this hill. And I ain't pedaling hard at all. Nice. That's tree leaves he's eating. He's a big old boy. I'm guessing about two feet long. Some kind of cart the fellas put in there grazing. Let's see here. We're gonna try it. Another performance aspect area that's important to me is uh, how well does the bike handle bumps. And I'm not just talking suspension, but you know, does the frame and the components hold up together? Did anything loosen up? And this turned out to be quite a bumpy ride across this field. The fella had packed gravel, hard packed gravel, and it was kind of a constant chudder underneath. And um, back and forth through it and everything else, the bike has stayed solid. So another check for the magic cycle in that area. And I can see why he would want to make sure he could get down here no matter what. It is beautiful. Mechanically and performance wise, the cruiser has done perfect so far. We'll see if that holds up. I'll be sure and let you know. 
Thinking Ahead ordered some component pieces. They came in in less than perfect condition, but the company was quick to respond to my concerns and gave me a great free gift. Knowing that I wanted to go a lot of places, there was one last aspect that I had to see how this electric bike thing was going to work out on. Highway driving. This uh, is affectionately known around here as the Little Baron Speedway. Four lanes of mostly 65 miles per hour traffic across the top of the mountain. These guys encourage me that it can be done. And it can. I was able to get up to the advertised speed of 28 miles per hour quickly. I was able to get across traffic and uh, into safe lanes very zippily with uh, the torque provided. And last but not least, I want you to meet my little buddies. Whenever I go to the store, we meet up. I'm positive they love me and I know I love them. If they ever did catch me, they'd probably lick me to death and I'd rub their bellies. Those short legs though, I don't think they can. But if they ever do manage, then we'll just see what happens. <laughs>